Well, yeah. I can't I can't wait to see them because I I love all the other videos that you've made. Thanks. Um, and I would actually post a link to my audience because I I think uh, I I've reposted them a couple of times before on yeah. the blog, but I'll I'll post the full. Thank link you very much. You them. like the Philip K. Dick one? Yeah, I do. Yeah. I do. And the that other one about uh, which which brings me actually to the next question. Uh, I I also liked uh, and the first video I saw of yours was the one about the singularity. So so let me ask you. I mean, I, I already kind of know the question because I saw your video and and so on. But what is your take on the technological singularity? Well, the video itself. I, I don't know. I mean, it, it's my take at exploring mostly the Hollywood mm -hmm. impression of of the singularity, and uh, it's the Frankenstein stories. It's which is true. Um, it's 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 treated the same as as most new technologies. Mm -hmm. um, they come along, and there's uh, there's here's a good little scary tale of what happens when it all goes wrong. Um, I don't. Not that I don't have any fears of some of the possibilities here, but I don't know that that's exactly my take. But but it was fun to play with and explore the Hollywood perception of that and then uh, uh, add my little take and a little bit about Roomba and... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, and and I really like the joke that I was so happy to finally do something with is that it's just something I saw a long time ago, which is uh, the Isaac Asimov book of stories called I, Robot. I, Robot. I One time I stumbled on a website that was in Spanish, and there I saw the title, Yo, Robot. And I just that's just always cracked me up. I've yeah. never even really written a joke around it because it's always like, Yo, Robot. It's like, yeah. that's so funny to me that that's the actual title. And then if you look, if you Google... If you don't believe me, Google it and do an images search, uh, Google images, and you'll see some book titles with iRobot, and you'll see um, a movie poster with Will Smith that says, Yo, Robot. Um, anyway, very funny. So, um, so putting aside the video, your yeah. personal take on it then? Well, I'm thrilled at some of the possibilities. I've, I'm, I like to be optimistic. Um, <sighs> Coloring some of this is, as far as like my view of the future in general, I've always been very optimistic. And one of the things about science fiction that I always loved was laying out under the stars and looking up at, at, at the star-filled heavens and thinking about all these stories by Asimov and Clark and Niven. And, 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 and I always, it used to kill me to think that I think this stuff is going to happen. And I don't know that I'm going to live long enough to see it. And I want to. So uh, that always like kind of killed me, like thinking that I don't think it'll happen in our life uh, lifespan. Um, but now it's turning out that some amazing, some incredible things have already happened in our lifespan. And the rate that things are, if we listen to Kurzweil, the rate that things are accelerating, you know, in a couple decades, we might see some thrilling stuff, the kind of stuff that Charlie Strauss has written about and Greg Egan. I don't know. Um, I like to, I, yeah, I don't have a firm opinion. I'm a little bit agnostic on this mm -hmm. in terms of what I actually think will happen. Um, so let I'm me, a little fearful about the environment. I mean, I'm really concerned about climate change and are we going to do something about that? Mm -hmm. But I think that whether we do or not, this rate of change in, in tech is going to accelerate. And I hope that it addresses longevity in time to save me uh, <laughs> and it, at least extend my view a little farther into the future. Uh, because I do think if we don't destroy ourselves, I think it's inevitable that I'm a very big fan of the, of the uh, manned space program. Mm -hmm. And I think it's inevitable that, that we're going to spread. That's all we've ever done. The whole history of evolution Absolutely. is about how we can't be contained and we fill every ecological niche. And yeah. I don't think a little thing like gravity or the vacuum of space is going to stop us for long. I think it's just one more uh, lip of one more jar that we've crawled out of. We crawled out onto dry land from the, the ocean womb that we perhaps started in mm -hmm. um and that was harsh enough i think that that it's inevitable that we'll spread i do think that um yeah. so so you you said that you're not sure exactly if and what's going to happen but let me ask you this this way then um ray kurzweil is often criticized for being too optimistic yeah 
what in your opinion is our chance of surviving the singularity if it were to happen? <laughs> Now, I, I, I do know that you, you do keep a hostage in your closet as a bargaining <laughs> chip, so, uh, which is your Roomba, for those who right. haven't seen the videos yet. But what do you think is our chance of surviving anything like that? You know, I think it's a good question. And it's like, well, what, what would we have to survive? Do we have to survive the AI, I, uh, the AI that we create or that, that comes into being uh, in the Rob Sawyer books that whether we created intentionally or not, mind, yeah. but you know what, even short of that, I wonder if, can we, are we ready for the singularity? Are we ready for forgetting an AI for a second? The kinds of technologies that are in Accelerando that, um, I look around and look how humans behave in crowds, in be in traffic, and at ball games. <laughs> Do you want these people to have at their virtual fingertips the kind of power that in Werner Vinge? Like, do you want these kinds of people to have uh, behind them a bodyguard, floating, armed uh, robot bodyguard that, that that can zap you? You know that 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 calls into question your defenses. I'm not sure if I want people to. Have have I don't know. I think that that as fast as the technology is accelerating, are we uh, when are, are we going to evolve to be able to handle this stuff? Are we going to use it? Pro I've, I've seen recently John Shirley, uh, sci-fi writer, has a great piece in IO9 that came out in November that I just stumbled upon. That's about the singularity and and I think that you know people talk about. Um, Let's say we have cornucopia machines, and let's say we're, you know, post-scarcity. I mean, we have yet to see an example where all the wealth gets shared properly. You know, it's, it's not properly distributed or evenly distributed. Um, so at what point are we going to evolve enough that if the technological ability is there? I mean, right now, we could feed everyone on the planet, I'm told, but we're not. So at what point um, will our nobility and our will our will our emotions evolve to the point that we can have this technology and let it not destroy us mm -hmm. or let it not be an even more extreme class system? Uh, yeah, that's I wouldn't want to see that. Mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't even if I was one of the the few. I I think that. I'd feel a lot better if 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 there was a little more sharing going on. I don't want to sound like a communist, but uh, <laughs> a little sharing. I mean, you know, wouldn't that be the Christian thing to do, America? Uh, I don't like the waving around of, of Christianity uh, when 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 people aren't actually behaving in a Christ-like manner. And I'm not, like I said, I'm an agnostic Jew saying that, um, <laughs> wishing for. Uh, you know, it's going, hey, I wouldn't even mind you calling it a Christian nation if you would at least behave like it was a Christian nation. Start helping out the poor and the needy and sharing a little. And and let's look at that discrepancy a little harder. <laughs> Fascinating, Brian. 